get going. Uh, I know everybody's got lots to do today, and so we're going to uh, get into it. I see I, everybody's here. I know that Stu's getting now. Uh, there he is. <clears throat> Any disclosures? See none. Uh, I just uh, <coughs> I know that there's no place here to add other, but I just want to add another item to discuss. Um, Nothing uh, major pressing, but uh, with respect to the uh, AMO conference coming up, uh, I just want to add uh, just a, a small conversation on that at the end, if we can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, pass this over to... Yeah, uh, Craig's going to do the presentation, and maybe okay. just uh, to get started, I just... Uh, Lots of work based on the, the direction that council provided us. One of the big things, and, and Craig highlighted it uh, within the presentation, is the fact of uh, the current programs that are taking place. Um, quite truthfully, with the, the current programs taking place, that in itself and accomplishing it would be seen as success. Um, but we know that there's a desire to do more. And so we've tried to put together, and we've involved the entire leadership team, uh, the best part of uh, 20 uh, people with managers and, and general managers, to put together a, a plan uh, to try to accomplish what council's looking for in the priorities. Um, the day-to-day, -day, um, I've always said, is you know, most important, you know, getting the, 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 the small things done right. But right now, it's, it's about, there's a lot of big things that need to, to be moved forward. And so it's really trying to focus on that and free up time of staff uh, and moving forward. So I think that's one of the things to, you'll hear in the presentation. But it's, it's, uh, there's only so many bodies, and it's the same bodies that are leading and doing the day-to-day -day that are doing the, the big moves moving forward. And so that's outlined in here. The current projects, you'll see them in here, are actually moving very well. Um, the, the business application software, the administration building, um, but, uh, and I think it, it's going to be uh, uh, helpful if we do a tour of the new, uh, the new administration building. We did one yesterday, just to get a sense of the complexities of the build, what still needs to take place, and the amount of effort and, and, uh, and time that's going to be consumed in, in finishing off uh, that building um, and moving people in. It's a, it's a monumental task. Um, and, and, and then you have the software, which has essentially changed everything that we, we do in the way, and the way we do it. It's going to be phenomenal moving forward as far as key performance indicators and creating efficiencies. Um, it's already helping us electronically and will help us with the littlest things like timesheets instead of being entered multiple times, entered once, and sign-offs, and our purchasing piece is already fully automated. Um, but it's take, you know, those kind of things take a lot of upfront work and then pay off, and it will pay off greatly over the, over the years as we move forward. So I think those are some of the high-level key messages, and, and, and Craig's put together a thoughtful presentation on a plan we think we can execute over the, over the next uh, three uh, and a half years in this term of council. So, um, Your Worship, members of council, so you, you, you have a document like this, uh, it's going to be reflected in the slides, but it's probably best if you sort of follow along uh, through the 11 by 17 sheets. Mm. Mm. So, for the last two or three terms of council, we've been um, uh, working with council, and council has established its uh, uh, priorities to achieve over its term of council. Um, it's a, it was an approach that was put in place uh, to ensure that uh, we just uh, we were able to accomplish uh, key things that move the organization and the community forward. So the purpose of, of having this type of document is is really important because it really keeps focus on the things that are important. Uh, more importantly, it, it ensures that uh, our organization both the administration side and the political side have a common understanding of what's important. Uh, it also allows us then to start aligning initiatives to move it forward. So that's uh, the budgets, the staff, the, the other resources required to move it forward. Uh, it ensures that we're managing the workload so that uh, time is carved out to do this work and so that uh, uh, that's it 
uh, understood it, there's an expectation. <clears throat> and then also, I think it's really important and gives counsel as well as, as us, but, but primarily counsel an ability to communicate to the community and the stakeholders, you know, what are the big things that you're working on? What are the things that generally align with the things that you've heard from the community that they want? <clears throat> and so it helps with communications. So this particular slide, I think it's just really important. It's, it's, it's about uh, just trying to contextualize how all the various pieces of work fit together. And so if you think on the left-hand side, if you think of the, the glass vessel there. I mean, that's all the time we've got to do work. Um, and then the sand is the, the urgent things. Those are like the, the, the daily... Uh, urgent matters that need to be dealt with, the uh, constituent concerns, other, other particular issues that crop up. Uh, the smaller rocks are important projects, and the bigger rocks are, your, are what we're talking about today. And that, well, it's really important, and I fundamentally want to, to, to stress this, it's really important to focus and do the little things well. It's also important to make sure that, that doing the little things well is also done with a view to recognizing that there are those other pieces of work that need to be done as well. And fundamentally, uh, and there's lots of good videos on the, on the web, but fundamentally, if all you're doing is dealing with the, um, uh, the urgent, uh, immediate issues, uh, what happens is you, you don't ever really get around to dealing with the big things. But if you deal with, if you carve out time for the big things, the little things can fit in uh, uh, around it, and you actually can accomplish more. It may require some thoughts around, uh, you know, the, uh, the timing of response and things like that. But what it does do is it helps ensure that you're achieving sort of that balance between, you know, responding to immediate issues, but also completing the things that take the time and energy and that move the organization and the community forward. So, um, shortly after the election, um, staff, uh, senior staff, including um, our managers, uh, the senior management team, Don, uh, some pre-work was done, um, and it included sort of looking at what did we accomplish last term? Uh, what do we foresee happening in the, uh, in the environment, legislatively, uh, pr uh, politically, uh, what we think the we are hearing from the community, those sorts of things. And through that process, there were a number of things that, uh, from the administrative side of things, uh, we identified as things we thought uh, we should be considering. And then in March, uh, you guys had a workshop with a facilitator. And just to remind you, um, you know, p the part of it was what's going well, what, 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 what are the strengths, what are the successes, what did you hear, uh, what are the things that uh, you feel were important. And then as a collective, you went through a process of taking all those ideas and sort of coming up with your top, top five, top ten, wh whatever the number was in terms of the things that as council you thought were really important to think about. And just as a reminder, uh, one of the things we, we, we asked was what's on your mind? And so some of the things that are on the slide were the things that council said, you know, this is kind of what we're thinking about. These are the things we're concerned about. These are the things we're hearing. We also asked, uh, you know, what do you need to know? And uh, some of the key things that we took away was, you know, council wants to know when you're making decisions that there's support. You want to know that what you're hearing is representative of the community at large. You wanted to make sure that the, the information that's provided to you is um, data-driven. You wanted to know, you know who's benefiting, who's not benefiting. Uh, is it essential? Uh, you wanted to have a sense of, are there other options? Um, you wanted it to be done on a principle-based approach so that the decisions are flowing out of fundamental principles that councils adopted. And you also wanted to look at you know, decisions that, and I think the important one is, the last one's really important, but the decisions that you take today, 
uh, are we thinking about and are we looking at uh, avoiding issues in the future as a result of that? So it's really that kind of sense of strategic planning, uh, which, which uh, Council uh, identified as very important to them. So in terms of what we're talking about today, we're talking about term of council priorities. And so several years ago, we identified key criteria that helped shape, you know, what is a corporate priority? Because everything's important, but what is truly a corporate priority? And fundamentally, it's things that are high profile, things that require a lot of resources, things that require resources from across various departments. Um, that it either affects the, the organi organization or the community, and that it, it is also one of those things where if it doesn't happen, it's, it's, it's going to uh, reflect badly in terms of uh, corporate image. So as Don indicated, um, the program that is being presented today is ambitious. And it's ambitious in the sense of a number of things. And he identified that there's a number of ongoing carryover initiatives that still need to be completed. And uh, I'll go through those very quickly in a minute. Uh, but fundamentally, those are things that council identified um, during the last term and that have been worked on that will uh, you know, carry over into this term, uh, but that uh, have, have reached a point where we have to continue to, 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 to make sure that those things get done. Um, part of the reason the, the program is ambitious is you will see when you look at the, uh, the sponsors and the leads that there are a number of people who are touching a bunch of different projects and so you know, it's really important to recognize that uh, those people uh, in addition to doing that work, are doing whatever their division or departmental work is, as well as um, uh, the, the typical managerial responsibilities in terms of personnel and things like that. Uh, one of the key things that we know is, is, is impacting us is you know, the changing uh, rules and um, funding and uh, uh, legislation uh, that, that are coming from uh, the new provincial government and perhaps we'll see some additional things uh, through the federal election this fall. Uh, point being is these are things that uh, as much as we try to anticipate always come up and uh, throw, throw curveballs at us that we have to deal with and so some of the changes to the development charges as an example are, are those things that all of a sudden there's a new piece of work that you know, we honestly we didn't anticipate having to do. And it also assumes that, uh, you know, we have a full capacity and that there's minimal staff turnover in the, in, the, uh, in the process. We are a relatively small organization, and so all our managers are working managers. And so in, particularly at that level, uh, we have one, vacan one vacancy now. But, you know, if we get vacancies at that level, it can it can require sort of a pause and regrouping while we re recruit someone and, and skill them, or not skill them up, but get them to um, uh, the stage in the organization where you know, they understand what we're about, uh, what the project is, those sorts of things. So Don talked about some of the key uh, ongoing initiatives and uh, there's, there's uh, several technology things that are going on and the business application one is, is fundamental. Um, this is really relating to updating all our core um, technology systems, uh, human resource finance, um, and, and others. Uh, most of the systems we have uh, were, were established at the time of, of uh, the county was created. Some haven't been supported. Uh, a lot of them uh, have not historically talked to one another. And so there was a significant effort that was uh, uh, put in place to ensure that going forward we have the technology that allows us to achieve efficiencies, it allows us to measure performance, it allows us to do our work better. However, all technology projects are uh, labor intensive and uh, you know, certainly require a lot of uh, time, energy and effort and this particular one has um, required us to second staff to uh, you know, basically step out of their normal roles and uh, put, put energy towards that. 
and you can see uh, in terms of the key milestones that you know this particular project will take us into 2021 to uh, complete. It's it's no small task. The other two projects. Uh, relate more to uh, the, the the second one relates to um, building and planning um, mostly but obviously it requires IT support and other other supports as well it's about um, ensuring that uh, we can uh, streamline the development review process by doing it uh, electronically as opposed to the manual process now it will allow people to submit permits online it will ensure that we have one property system so that has all the information as opposed to the six or seven now and so we'll have a better sense of being able to for example um, one of the challenges we've had in the past has been uh, we take security um, and it's being taken in one part and uh, but we don't have a really good system that says, okay, we reached this milestone, now let's look at the security. We've typically relied on the person who's submitted the security to say, oh, um, can I get it back? And so what it does is it gives us a better ability, I think, to be more efficient and to be able to uh, uh, ensure that we're not losing things. And the corporate web ups, uh, site update is important. It is important for a bunch of reasons, but fundamentally, I think from council's perspective, and it has to do with being able to communicate, but it also has to, uh, it's changes that allow for people to self-serve services to be able to do it on their time. And so it's about better customer service. Mm -hmm. The central administration building, Don talked about, uh, it's, it's coming along and uh, it's a significant project, but it's more than a construction project. I think it's really important to recognize it is a project that's going to bring all your staff together and through that we're going to have um, uh, I, I think better efficiencies, better cross uh, departmental conversations. It also includes um, the community hubs and providing those services uh, that the community can use um, via the library. So, and it also includes, you know, uh, figuring out and dealing with the legacy uh, properties. So at the end of the day, it may be built by, you know, the end of the year, uh, we may be occupying it early next year, but there's still several things that are gonna take it into, uh, you know, the next year to, in terms of trying to, to wrap it up. Uh, council also, uh, just to, to give you a sense, is in the last couple terms of council, council has um, put a lot of, time and energy uh, and focus on the capital program. And I think it's really important that we recognize that there's a significant capital program going on. And so, uh, you know, those are the projects that, that council has said we, we, you know, we want to see happen. But those, that work also involves some of the people who are involved in the corporate initiatives as well. So it's important to recognize that uh, we, as we've ramped up the capital program, we've put more resources towards trying to achieve that. Uh, the economic development strategy is something council approved and there's a number of implementation things that this council will need to make decisions on uh, th throughout the process. And uh, I know Councillor Shirton is really interested in the last one and uh, so uh, we anticipate that will be completed this year. <laughs> And then there's always legislative stuff that happens, stuff that um, you know you we need to deal with. And so the items that are on there are things that um, you know because of pieces of legislation we need to deal with, and those types of things um, always come up. So the point being is we're going into this with with a number of things going on. So in terms of moving forward then, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you kind of the, the, the high level. If there's, any, if there's any questions, please stop. Um, the general managers and the directors, uh, people actually do most of the work, um, uh, or the people who, uh, I wouldn't say do most work, they understand the project probably better than I do, um, <laughs> uh, can answer it. So the first one uh, is, is responding to uh, changes in provincial funding. And fundamentally, uh, we know that 
uh, the province had previously indicated that it was looking for savings for municipality. Uh, they were looking for a 4% reduction, and uh, they, they withdrew that. But we don't anticipate that they're, it's not going to come back. And so one of the things that we need to do is recognize if the province is going to reduce its transfers to the municipalities in some shape or fashion, uh, how are we going to respond to that? What is our fiscal strategy? Uh, we also know that there's changes to the development charges, and we've talked about the, the implications of collecting uh, development charges for recreation fees, and the province has said they anticipate it's going to be revenue neutral. So one of the things that we need to deal with before the next budget is, in fact, trying to understand what the impact of those changes are, and so as we're dealing with the budget, we're coming forward to you with both a, an operating and a capital fiscal strategy that that will uh, allow us to understand what are the impacts of these changes and how are we going to respond to them. Mm -hmm. And it may, have, it may have implications in terms of the timing of you know, some capital projects and things like that. We just need to understand it. And so it's a piece of work that at this stage we don't have a clear sense, but we're hoping over the course of the next several months we'll get more information and be able to, before the next budget, uh, mm -hmm. give you some clarity. Um, maybe it should come in later, but you mentioned development charges, and, and as we're all aware of, it's been appealed right now, and it's going to be a lengthy process before that goes. Um, we will proceed further with, um, with as we, the charges, the, the levels that we adopted. Um, will there be, or can we create a separate fund, or do we put X amount of dollars in a separate fund in case we lose that and have to pay them back, or do we simply collect as is, as we passed, and then if we lose the appeal, have to pay back to say out of reserves or just... Uh, just. It's, it's the latter. Um, so there's two things going on. So one is the province is changing the rules. And um, although they've said that they anticipate it, it will be revenue neutral. Um, I, think, I think we're all sort of saying we're from Missouri, show us the money. Um, the, the second is the appeal, and under the appeal, we'll, we continue to, to collect the money, and if, if we lose, then we have to rebate it back with interest. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading in the Spectator this morning where Hamilton, as a result of the budget cuts, has to dip into the reserves, which are dwindling. Have we got any path where we're going in terms of what's going on? And I know when the school boards had the cuts, they got into cutting staff, teachers and all this. Is it too preliminary to look at that? I know they're cutting into their reserves. How are we going to manage this year and what's the projection for next year? Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> I think the simple answer is at this point there's not enough details to understand what all the impacts are other than to prepare for the fact that there are going to be cut, cuts and impacts that we have to address. And uh, a lot of the, the bigger municipalities receive money from the province to start doing service delivery reviews, so they're in that process right now. Um, the, retro, like the retroactivity of the cuts was repealed, so I mean there's no impacts in 19 per se. Specifically, there's some indirect impacts, and I think that's one of the bigger concerns is there's a lot of uh, nuances and maybe hidden items in the uh, the provincial budget that are coming out slowly over time that are going to either directly or indirectly affect municipalities because they're affecting other organizations that we deal with directly. Uh, so at this point, we're hopeful, you know, by later part of the fall, we'll have more answers so we can prepare a plan to, to understand what the impacts are and then how they address them. Uh, so I'm not cer certain why at this point Hamilton would be indicating the need to drip, to drip dip into reserves to address it because uh, the, the intent for the province and the messaging they're giving is you need to go out and find the savings somewhere. One of the concerns I have is that they're already projecting a deficit in Hamilton and double digit tax increases. <laughs> oh, I, I hope we're not looking at that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess mean, I to, to, is, is, is add to it is when Mark, I think, did the calculation, it was something in 17 million, I think, is what we get in funding. 20 million in total. 20 million. Operating capital. Yeah. Operating capital. We get 20 million from the province in funding. To me, that's our biggest risk is the fact that, one, they, some of the stuff they won't increase by cost of living, so you'll be stagnant, which we'll be falling back. Or two, they begin to reduce those, and they reduce those by 
a few percentages, you're going to be into you know, three, four, five million dollars, which is kind of like the loss assessment we had with OPG, which we ended up uh, doing over a four or five year period, uh, trying to, to gradually bring in, which would be using reserves. But this is why we come back to the use of reserves to fund hospitals and other things is the same money we're going to have to have before we put a tax increase of four or five percent. So we got the reason why we were so strong in the OPG and losing that six percent was because we had strong reserves and, and mark, between Mark and Karen they were able to use reserves and increase their taxes, use reserves, increase their taxes until it came. It was seamless. The community didn't really notice it within it. And that's our strength here is our reserves. But we, this is around the corner. They're not getting, getting more money at the province. And my sense is this 20 million is probably our greatest jeopardy. So I think being prepared for it and knowing that that could likely be there um, going down the road is, and I think, you know, Mark's got plans within the reserves and how we can try and calculate it, but it's based on our current reserves that we have. So we're raising this not to, you know, Fearmonger, but we're raising this to say it's something we got to deal with and something we got to put some time energy into making sure that we come back to you with clear a clear sense of what we're going to do The second key area that um, and council identified is is a, a a number of things that relate to managing growth for lack of a better word and so fundamentally uh, there's sort of four components to it and the first one is uh, completing what we are calling growth strategy, which is really the, what's the 20-year plan in terms of uh, how much land do we need, where is it going to be, how is it going to be serviced, how is it going to be financed, that sort of thing, um, so that as we move forward, we have a clear sense of uh, how we're going to be able to positively respond to the growth pressures. And so as part of that discussion, um, you know, there's the Frank Marshall dis business and park decisions and those sorts of things. Fundamentally, uh, the second part of that is we, we have a statutory requirement to update the official plan. And that's really all the other stuff that's not related directly to growth. So we're doing some work on hazard lands, uh, you know, uh, preparing for uh, higher um, higher water in the Great Lakes, erosion, that kind of thing. Um, so there's that kind of work that needs to happen. Uh, the third part, and I'll, I'll, I'll go, well, the third part is um, the, the whole concept of a Highway 6 servicing strategy, um, being we've got a, uh, you know, significant water treatment capacity uh, uh, allocation, uh, currently part of the communities on Hamilton Water, uh, are there opportunities in the long term to uh, become more self-sufficient and also to use that resource as, as potential revenue generation uh, going forward? And then lastly, Council made a decision last term to uh, put money in its capital budget for, uh, we, we know there's a wastewater treatment plant required to accommodate growth in Caledonia. And so there's some implementation things that have to happen. There's EA work and siting work. Well, yeah, um, Craig, on that places to grow strategy that's been kind of hindering us uh, in certain aspects with lots of surplus land in Townsend and maybe in other areas, is there more flexibility that allows you to develop in areas where there's more of a demand and, and then not so much, um, like, is there trade-offs that can be made now? Like, where are we at with that? Okay, so generally speaking, um, <clears throat> We've had a lot of conversations with uh, the province, and the, the new government has a much more flexible approach to, to that issue than the previous. The previous government had a whole bunch of very sort of prescriptive rules around it. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we're breaking out the growth strategy from the rest of the official plan. It allows us to expedite it. And so we think fundamentally, if you look at the schedule, we think uh, come the fall, we will be bringing forward the strategy to you uh, with the idea of, okay, does council agree with this? Then we would do the required sort of um, public uh, meetings notification. 
with the idea being that uh, by the end of the year, council will have formally said, yep, this is where we're going. And then there'll be some implementation things in terms of amendments and things that we technically have to do to make that happen. happen. But in the absence of some of the changes at the province, all that work would have been tied up with the, the hazard land work, the, all, all the other stuff that um, uh, we, we need to do. But what we're doing is we're gonna do it in two chunks. So the priority item for our sake is to deal with the growth issues and get that dealt with. And, and it so, ties in with the official plan also. Oh yeah, it's part of the official plan. plan anyway. But what, what we would do is, is we would deal with that and then we'll deal with the rest of it. And I think that strategy has generally been accepted at the province. So you can see that the timing of the, you know, the growth stuff takes us to the end of the year with some implementation things early next year but that the actual balance of the official plan will take us to the end of 2021. 2021. Uh, the Highway 6 servicing strategy is really about in the, you know, this year and next year, trying to get a really good sense of, you know, what are the future conditions? Uh, what can we do? What are the triggers? Um, what, when, how much? And then uh, looking at whether we uh, have a, how we would uh, finance it. And then the wastewater treatment plant for this term of council, I think the important thing is, is um, beginning this year and sort of ending next year is the whole uh, siting study and uh, uh, acquisition of that. So that you know, we know where and we know that we have the land when we need it. Is there any questions on this one? High-speed broadband was identified. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to ask a question yeah. and, and, and highlight potential servicing of adjacent communities. So the intent would be to look into becoming an exporter of water and help with our water. Well, can you talk up? Uh, the, the question that Council, uh, Council Corbett asked was, um, you know, the, the comment about uh, potentially serving adjacent communities. And the, and the answer is we have, we have an asset and it's, it positions us to, in fact, become a, a water supplier to other communities. We know our neighbors in Norfolk are struggling with that issue. And uh, if we have the capacity, you know, certainly it's something that we should be exploring. It would certainly help with our revenue. Thank you, and I know the door is open. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, maybe just on that though, because I, 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 I don't want to get the wrong impression. I don't think it's our intent to get into the business of selling water. And that's more of our intent to, to provide that service as Hamilton has to us um, at a basically a neutral uh, expense to us, but but mostly the advantage is for us getting more users on the system, which will ultimately keep our rates down or certainly level, right? Because I don't want to get the, the impression that, because if we do get into an arrangement with Six Nations or Norfolk or any other entity, we're not getting in the business of selling water at a premium. I, I don't think that's our intent because should we do get support from the province in that capacity, that's going to be a, a, a game changer if we're trying to actually get into business. They're not going to support the entity yeah. the same way. I, yeah, I guess uh, three, three, Mr. Brown. It, or, not necessarily quoting a business, but I, 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 if, I think if you do it the same way Hamilton's done it with us on that premise, that there's, we're not going to lose. And it's not going to cost us, and there may be, you know, coverage of administration uh, costs that can go uh, beyond that will sort of that fixed and variable cost. Right. It will bring down our fixed costs because we'll be able to do it over more people, mm -hmm. and so those kind of rates. But we wouldn't be saying, uh, you know, it's the cost of water plus 50 percent. Yeah. It, the, the the I think we the basis being 15 percent is being the basis at Hamilton. And that's really to cover off their administration, their management of it, and what it takes to do it. And it seems to be a fair one. And what I've said to, to I mean, in staff to staff uh, with Norfolk is we would base it off the same deal that we had with Hamilton, which I believe is a fair deal to the, the, the other community because the, the, the other community worries about nothing. Um, they, they just get water delivered. 
And so you're taking on that risk. There's got to be something in there for you to at least look after your your, your, your fixed line. cost and, and, and to be a, yeah. a benefit to your community, right? But not a not a quote business where we're for profit. No, I, and knowing how we roll in every other aspect, I mean, I would put the bandana on and expect that we're going to make a perpetual income in, all, in, in that. But in this case, I think it's... It's that spirit. It's providing the service, making sure that it's not at a cost to, to Haldeman, uh, but at the end of the day, there's a net opportunity because we're, we're, incre we're increasing the users. So I got John and then Dan. Yeah, just to comment on that with, we control our own destiny with our own water. You know, if there's a, back when they had, you know, you couldn't wash the cars, you couldn't sprinkle your lawn because there was a water shortage in Hamilton, if they turned the tap down a bit, we can control our own destiny with our own water. Well, I think that that's key is uh, increasing the volume, bringing the rates down because then that's a win-win for our taxpayers then, right? Because in that way we're increasing something and yet yeah, decreasing it. Absolutely. Yeah, their, their usage is actually going to be a net benefit to us. Exactly. Absolutely. Tony? Different, uh, different subject here under this category. Craig, I just wondered um, when we, when you talk about the growth strategy and properties within our urban areas and the official plan update, um, <coughs> are you, are we only looking like for, I'll use an example because that's always the easiest, the inquiry that we had on the, uh, Peterbilt property in Hager Salt. Are we only going to look at changing the designation on properties like that one if we have a specific inquiry from somebody who's interested in purchasing it and doing some type of development? Or is the county going to take the initiative and suggest to the province that, hey, we've got this particular piece of property seen That's here? What they do. Really hasn't, we haven't really haven't seen much activity on it the last 10, 15 years. We think we, the Holloman County would be better served by changing the designation from either residential to, or, or light industrial to residential or, or vice versa. Right. How are we going to handle that? So the growth strategy is going to accomplish um, several things. It's going to deal with, do we need additional land that isn't designated right now? It's going to deal with, are there lands that are currently designated for one use that don't make sense anymore? So for example, um, in Caledonia, um, last time we did the official plan, uh, GP was an operating entity and those lands were all identified as industrial. <laughs> We know that that business has gone away and we know there's opportunities to, to relook at that. We, so we've gone through, I think, each community and, and tried to identify lands that it just would make sense to change it to a different category, but we're also looking at adding lands. And in some communities, um, you know, we'll be reducing lands because there's too much land for the demand. Right. So it, what will be presented to you is that complete package. And what it will also intending on doing is saying, here's what we need for the next 20 years, but we also want to bring forward, here's what we think we're going to need for the 20 years beyond that. We want to try to pre-identify not just this time, but the next time. So, so there's a, a very good groundwork going forward for knowing what we, what we need. Okay. Maybe just only to build off what, uh, through the mayor, is, is the, linking land with with servicing capacity and so that we have the right amount of lands in the areas and that we're not in areas where we have lots of land where the cost is prohibitive to do servicing so making sure we have the right land in the right places at the lowest cost to service and to meet the market needs is that's okay. kind of the premise okay moving on to broadband uh, so council <laughs> identified as um, a priority uh, a strong desire to try to facilitate facilitate the uh, establishment of high-speed internet um, throughout the county and particularly um, in areas that that currently are uh, underserviced in that regard the rural areas um, so f the project as as is, is described is really trying to facilitate private sector investment uh, it's not talking about the county you know creating a uh, an internet arm we're not doing that but the intent is to try to see how we can uh, support the private sector in, in providing that service um, there's been a, a fair amount of work that's been done on that 
Um, and so the intent uh, is to try to, first of all, come to council with an outline of um, uh, how we see that happening and then going through a, a procurement process uh, with the idea being that we would then, uh, through that process, uh, hopefully by the uh, um, uh, mid-2020, uh, have have uh, uh, an entity selected and uh, begin they can begin the implementation at that stage so the the process is as outlined in there is one that we think is required to uh, ensure that uh, we uh, do it in the right way that it's it's open it's transparent and effective Stu? yeah Craig could you just expand a little bit on the last item the implementation this kind of faded orange yeah. is that are we looking at anywhere in that two-year window or yeah uh, so, so for the sake the faded one basically says from uh, the dark stuff is is the key decisions this council needs to make and in this case if by mid 2020 you've got okay this is the provider this is the role of the county this is what they're going to do go then it's really from there on in the idea would be that entity would then be implementing it just a question, and along with that, then you're going to bring up whoever we, you choose as the private entity is going to come up with a, a strategy and a plan, a mapping of the county as to how, how they see things unfolding. Just yesterday, for example, I, I know the mayor's commented about the progress they made in Caledonia so far, but just yesterday I had a comment or a question from somebody in my ward at the northern boundary, uh, north of Caledonia, uh, just off Highway 56. When are they going to be here? Well, I can't answer that question right now, but I'm assuming with this is going to there's going to be a component that talks about strategy and when when we when they think they'll be in certain areas of the yeah. county. Absolutely. I mean, I think the intent is we want to be very clear that you know we have an expectation it's going to happen in a certain time that they've got a plan and shows the schedule of things that are going to happen those sorts of things. So that's really what the whole process of the, uh, the procurement or the RFP or I guess that, 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 uh, that process of going out and saying, okay, who's interested? What is your proposal? How are you going to do it? And then tying that to uh, a, a document or a legal, legal uh, agreement that ensures that it happens according to something that this council has agreed with. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to throw bit of a wrench in the <clears throat> system and ask um, in I guess in, in in light of the process that we've undertaken and and almost kind of mirror the same idea with respect to when we went out with the public and, and did the process on the cab um, I, I don't think there was too many surprises really as the outcome and I'm sure that this is going to land in the same capacity the same way so I would really like to be able to see the first uh, or at least the legal agreement and in, in, in the preferred option by fourth quarter this year in the end so that we're making an announcement uh, by the end of this year I, I, I can't and I certainly I know being involved in some of the early uh, discussions, but I, I guess I'm I'm not sure why we can't make that happen by the fourth quarter. Sure. Um, because I think it's important for us to to be able to get that out to the public that this is this is who we're partnering with and exactly. and we have an agreement right. and and I, I think we can make that happen. Sure. So. as we did in the in min building yeah. um i i would agree with you that the at the end of the day the decisions i think um one probably could have anticipated where where we would end up but by going through that 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 structured process it, you know process matters right and by going through that structured process we were able to demonstrate that the decision actually flew, flew, uh, came out of principles and that one of the things that we've identified here is, you know, developing the, the procurement process uh, like this, this, this quarter uh, and then um, 
assessing the responses in the, the third quarter and then uh, the report to council. Um, the response rate that we get, if we get one respondent, then this process can be significantly, um, I think, uh, collapsed. Uh, if, if there's multiples, I think we have an obligation to make sure that we've gone through the proper steps so that the decision at the end of the day uh, the outcome, I think, would be evident to anyone that the county had done its, its, its proper due diligence. The timing here is, is one that, um, I'll, I'll be honest, we, where we started and where we're at here is, has been compressed to, to some yeah. degree. Um, I hear what you're saying, but I also truly don't want to tell you what you want to hear if we can't deliver it. Right, I understand. I guess then if, if we write the parameters and, and we put that out with a 30-day deadline or what have you, um, then it's, I think the, the ultimate conclusion in that is going to be exactly what we all, I think, know. Um, and, I, and I guess my feeling is, is, is Sure, let's get there and yeah. I think we can get there Craig I, I guess what yeah like so, so maybe maybe you know if because it's not really a procurement we're not buying something we're, there's gonna be a proposal we've used procurement but if we put out that proposal and it comes and it in and, and, and it comes back in that here are the you know even if there's multiple proposals but there's only one right proposal then I think what you're hearing is if there's one proposal and it is then it can be fast-tracked if yeah. it's multiple worthy proposals a bit more complicated it might take place is that what i'm hearing yeah yeah that's what you're hearing i mean if we get let's say let's say we get a, a do, half dozen proposals you know if we evaluate it and it's clear there's one that's head or tails above it then that's that's different it, than if there's like two that are you know competing um our sense is uh that um you know there's probably a reasonably good likelihood that we're not going to get a ton of proposals so, uh, you know, from that perspective, if we go out and there's one that's head or tails above everything, I think that then you're playing the obvious game and we can move forward. This is built on the basis that, okay, what happens if we get a couple that, are, that, that have to be assessed? Okay, so then if we back up then, stepping back from the end game where we think we're going to land, yeah. realistically, getting the, 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 the request out, is would be when well. <laughs> you I, too I, I, well yeah. i guess yeah. I, the reason i ask yeah. there's no surprise this is but this this is the number one priority and, and and this is really you know the the i think the main issue of this term of council aside from others not to dismiss them but this is the number one issue everybody's heard across the county and and so going into this term a year, well, almost, not quite, but, but eight months ago, yeah. here we are. Yeah. I guess I would be remiss if I don't ask. Sure. We should already have pretty much the, the nuts and bolts behind what this proposal, or what we're expecting. And I think we should be able to get that out now. Right. Um, and, 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 I mean, filter through those, those companies. We should have, I, I think, an answer by, by fall that... You know, this is uh, this is the one, two, three, or a dozen that have, and I'm suspecting it's probably going to be just one. Right, uh, and, and that's the intent, Your Worship, is is to be able to this fall come back and say, here's what we heard, and okay. from that you'll know whether there's one that's heads or tails above the other. Which would then put us into the fourth quarter, if. <clears throat> Which would then put us in a position of being able to then make an announcement before the end of the year. Uh, to to at the very least uh, <laughs> <laughs> I move in that direction. I mean, what we did, what we had yesterday. I mean, we had we actually had. A, I mean, through through you, Mr. We had a, a good a good meeting yesterday with um, a conference call with uh, Sullivan Mahoney. Yeah. So we're working on because one of the things, the first things are, is it legal? What's what? Are, what are, so we've 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 done a lot of over the last two and a half months, three months, a lot of 
this work to get there. But if we if we get to that point where the where the proposal goes in and we say we're looking for, searching for proposals of providers who will provide internet uh, uh, throughout the county, and we're uh, and, and we're looking for your 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 project to bring bring it in to do an evaluation. The public that whole public process. Then it, once we get that company, the due diligence of what that company has, I think it's 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 the whether or not you get three or four that are very complicated, and, and then you're down to a, we have a, a responsibility a, 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 to to go through a, pro, a, a more comprehensive process, or we end up with a, here's what it is, here's our plan, and this is what it is, and we've done the due diligence with Sullivan Mahoney. We're expecting a report back for Sullivan Mahoney, I think, on the 9th of uh, 9th of, the, of July of kind of where, what are the, the key steps that we need to have legally to be able to do this. So lots of work's getting done on it. So you're hearing that they're going to push for as soon as they can do it. If they can get to the level of an announcement in, in December and then subject to, you know, a, a formalized agreement. But we, we get it that it, it needs to be pushed, right? right. It, needs to, it, needs to ha it needs to happen. And Mark, just I'm going to throw him a little bit. Um, Mark, you know, said by the end of the year we should be able to publicly tell council this is the this is the one that that staff are are, are suggesting that we should be looking at. Right, which I guess I'll get to you, Rob. Just yep. one, but that would bring the legal agreement. I mean, the to me, the legal is should that already should be started, yep. right? As you're saying, Woody's There's, already kind of starting to put together the framework. Um, yes, there's two, sort of two components to it. There's the first legalese is, okay, what can we do? Right. And then the second legalese is, now we've selected you, here's the agreement between us to formalize the, 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 the working relationship. Right. But so, the, the foundations of that, sh I'm assuming, should be, like, that, we, it would be reasonable, I think, to get ahead of that. Court second, I guess, I, yeah. yeah, second quarter of 20 puts us, you know, I'd, I'd like to see those yellow, or not yellow, but them funny color bars at the bottom, this way. <laughs> you're, you're being crystal clear, <laughs> but you want to Rob? Well, um, my question, I heard Mark mention something about public consultation. That public consultation maybe would come with when we've decided on who the supplier is or provider and where maybe some of these towers may or may not go in the country because some people might have an opposition of well i don't want it in my backyard so i want it 100 meters down the road isn't that when we're going to bring public into this well, public's not going to be in this before this are they there's a survey going on there's when you're making a decision of this and 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 <clears throat> Particularly as as a council, if you're doing things that um, will assist uh, expediting the est establishment of this service, you absolutely need to do that in a public forum, right? And so, as part of that, you've got to be able to say, "Okay, we got three. These are the ones. These are the criteria. This is how we're going forward with that." And so from that perspective, and like we did with some of the others, you know, people should have an opportunity to uh, provide input. Uh, it's, 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 it's essential for, like we did this for the administration building, if you remember. When we did the administration building before council finally said, yeah, here's, here, here's the location and everything, we, we did go out there. And as a result of that, we found that there was strong support for the direction that we eventually took. Well, Craig, I get that, but we're not talking about location. We're talking about providers. So we don't go out and say, who's going to pave my road out on Booker Road? We don't give the public input. Yeah. To me, I want once we select who we're selecting, then I think we go to the public. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're not going to consult the public on, the public just wants better internet. <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. I'm saying that before. You need to make the decision uh, in a fashion that uh, an, an open an open council decision is when you have to yeah. make that decision. Well, I get that. And as part of that, though, there needs to be an opportunity for people who are interested to to delegate to council to be able to say whether they're in support or not in support of that. It's fundamentally important okay. if you're going to make this decision uh, to, to expedite that service uh, 
that 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 happen. Otherwise, I think you run a you know. Uh, but we would qualify that just as we would with any other meeting. Would it be posted? This is the item. Right. If you want to st stand as a delegate, you're welcome to speak right. for or against. Right. That's right. And I think and that's this just our regular process. Is, yeah. is that it's it's got to be a public. It's got to be an open process. And what it might be is before the proposal goes out there, we could report back to council once we've got the legalese is council, here's the proposal that we're gonna be putting on the street, looking for this, here's the parameters of it, we're wanting the mapping of it, the timing of it, here are the essential things, and, 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 and general public, here's what it's gonna be, if you, if you wanna comment, or uh, come on in. Right. What I would expect there is, here's the overall framework, this is what we're looking at moving forward, and you'd fill the chamber times five with people saying, I want it tomorrow. One of the things that was raised was the affordability of it. And so one of the things might be, I want it tomorrow, but I want it at a decent price, or how will you insure me? So I think that's just a meeting where you, you where this council just approves the go forward of this, the proposal going out on the street for the 30 days. The public gets in to understand what we're, what we're suggesting and then it, it goes out, then it would come back, the evaluation, then we'd bring forward, here's the provider we're suggesting, and again, you know, the, from a public perspective, it's an open meeting, and they can have comment on okay. that. It's clear now. Okay. Okay. Don explained it much better than I did. No, I get a better idea. <laughs> but I just thought, yeah. <clears throat> Anything else on this particular one? Okay. Um, so the other one and that, that council identified or another one that council identified was um, the desire to, to begin the process of looking at the indoor pool or a pool in combination with other things. Um, so to be clear, what's, what we're proposing is by the end of the term to get a decision in terms of yes or no, not construction. End of term? By the end of term to get a decision on, uh, to do the work in terms of the feasibility, to do the work in terms of uh, if the decision is yes, where, those sorts of things. But the staff don't feel that we have the capacity to actually begin the construction if you decide to go to that route. And just to put you, to give you some context, you know, this is a very complicated issue and there's a going to be a myriad of perspectives on this. Um, you know, it's probably more complicated than the admin building just because I think it's going to be much more controversial. The admin building decision was made in 15 and we're going to be occupying it next year and that's been done with a significant level of resources. So, uh, you know, just all, all the cards on the table is, is we think we can get you to a point of getting a decision uh, and we think we can do that by having a very good process that makes sure that uh, if you, when you're making that decision, you have a clear sense of, uh, you know, level of support, the, the issues surrounding it. Councillor Del Monte's been concerned about making sure that we're getting um, a, uh, a proper, uh, thorough uh, understanding of, of sort of the real perspective out there. Um, and so that's, that's what's really being proposed. Can we, um, okay, so I've just got a long list here already, but can, I guess what I'm wondering is, instead of um, looking at uh, an indoor pool study could we not be looking more holistically at, at what our recreational services look like across the county, our strengths and weaknesses in each of the communities? And from that, that flushes out, you know, what we could be looking at in terms of filling gaps. Mm -hmm. Rather than, because my concern is, is that if we, t if we hire a consultant saying indoor pool, yes or no, Indoor pool Dunville, Caledonia, or Hagersville, Jarvis. You're gonna pull, we're gonna polarize the, the county, and we're Definitely. going and we're not going to get Buy ultimately uh, a real sense of what we need to get to the end game. And I think if we if we simply had and, and I don't and I, there's nothing worse than giving a consultant a broad you know idea, but I think if we gave them sort of the this is our 
this is what we have and we want you to look at where we're where we're at today and highlight the strengths in each community but also highlight the weaknesses and then it's the weaknesses that we can then determine can we fill mm -hmm. and if we can fill them how much is that cost et cetera et cetera et cetera i guess that would be i think enough really for us to to absorb in this term and then it goes into next term as okay this is what the report says now we have you know some ideas to bring into the next term as how we can fill those gaps right is that and i i'm just that's kind of what i was envisioning not and i because I, I hate the idea of just tagging an indoor pool yeah because then that really no your worship i think you know what you're suggesting makes a lot of sense um you know certainly we've been sort of taking our direction from the the you know the conversation that happened in march if council is in agreement with that um you know i i think it uh it's a less it's a less polarizing approach towards trying to understand the needs yeah okay so i got dan Stu, and then rob yeah um, and then bernie <laughs> thanks mr mayor uh what you just said echoes words i want to say um if we think back to 1990 when we were looking at the indoor leisure plex in california it did extremely polarize this community, like and i say community Holloman county we don't want to go back down that path again we need to look at the whole needs and assessment for this county yeah it opens up for an, a consultant that he gets to or she gets to go crazy with it but i think that if we just strictly went with a pool and whether location whatever you're going to see the re reintroduction of a civil war in Haldeman county let's look at the needs all what is needed where strengths weaknesses and go from there and get the right decision and get it right as Stu. Yeah, my comments, I guess, are probably going to be, be a bit redundant now because I agree with what the mayor's point of view is. But just in case it gets overruled and we're strictly talking about a new rec center pool, I just want to throw a curveball out there. The light bulb didn't come on when we first had the discussion, and it might seem pie in the sky. But let's say we do go down this route about at the end of today, we say we want a new indoor pool rec center, which hopefully we don't. Maybe one of the recommendations to whoever this consultant might be we're considering looking at joint services, water services with Norfolk. Norfolk's going through the same process, except they're a wee bit ahead of us. I know other municipalities have joint rec services. Is there any, I'm just gonna throw it over there. What about a, a cost saving, a maintenance saving that we join with Norfolk over some type of rec service? People go, ah, no way. I don't even know if that discussion has happened or if it's a possibility or they would even be interested. But if we do go with that original route, I like that put down in the in the package to investigate okay. but back to the holistic not alienating the county best approach uh, Rob well I'm gonna agree and not agree I agree the idea of the whole seeing where the efficiencies and deficiencies are in the communities but at the end of the day we're not gonna have five pools in our county we're either gonna have one or two ultimately this has kind of been an initiative for the last eight years so i'm hoping with this approach that we're going to at least have some costing of what it's going to be for a pool of this size in this consultant's approach and i want it budgeted by 221 or at the latest 222 i want it in the budget i don't want to be coming back next term or whoever else is sitting here debating whether we're going to put this in the budget so the fact that it's not started, I think we can come out to the public and tell them that right now, that this, whatever is decided, will not be built in this term. But I want to state emphatically it's going to be budgeted for it in our 10 year forecast. Okay, so just, <clears throat> um, I think that it's fair to be able to say, or write in the terms, that, you know, the weaknesses individually in each community. Or what's missing in each community and and then a, a second line on that would be here's what's missing as a whole in the county and and that's where that indoor pool could fit in 
Um, and then it's that then stems into a conversation as to, okay, well, if it's the county and the community and everybody that says, well, we, we, that we really want that, you know, but besides budgeting for it, there's still that elephant in the room and that's where, and, and we can go around this table and I think we could get seven different locations. Uh, I would say maybe four. <laughs> I'm thinking one guy is the wow. same right I am. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, Bernie, then Tony, and then Dan. Yeah, I went to my community with an election priority and was successful in the election, and one of my uh, primary uh, priorities was a pool. So I'll not betray that to the public I have out there. I agree with the process that was followed. I'm hoping through this analysis and technical review, it will cast some information on what you're speaking about, Your Worship. Uh, it will identify us with some figures as to what what is plausible. My concern is indicated by my fellow counselor is the timelines. And, community is asking you know this has been on our radar what are we doing about it is it justifiable to take this long for this study to go ahead yeah, so okay. maybe just add, <laughs> Mr. Spirit, we've just completed a recreation master plan we've gone through all our facilities we've we've got a, 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 a an inventory of condition where things are at so that is a great base to start off in this next venture within it. I think one of the things that the, the consultant might say, and I look at it here to say, you know, if we had eight communities, would we be looking for eight pools, right? And when you get into senior centers and, and when you get this feedback, when you do on this level, you're going to get the, the really active senior, the pickleball, the indoor this, the whatever, we, are all the things that are going to come out of it. And I think that this decision at some point is going to be is, are we one county or are we six and, 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 and where does that have to be? And what can you afford on a population of 45, 50,000 people uh, at the end of the day? And so I, I, I hear what um, uh, the Councilor Patterson said about the Norfolk. I think that you know, it's, a, it's a great idea. At least look at all the different options you have out there to see what's possible, right? But it's, it's going to come down to you're going to end up with a whole bunch of things that people are going to be looking for. And at some point in time, the tough decision is going to be made to say, and, and a consultant will, will bring that forward and say, from an affordability distribution of assets, here's what you've got, here's what I could suggest. So we, a lot of that information will come out of what we've already, the work we've done. But it certainly is a polarizing one. And to do it at this high level, you come back and have a consultant say to you, it's one and you, sh you should do it you know, in, a, in a central area and then, then debate that at that point in time, right? So, oh, sorry. I've got, uh, who was just last? Bernie. Bernie, so then uh, Tony. Mr. Mayor, I, I agree with your approach of um, doing sort of a scan, a scan of, of uh, the municipality and determining what, what's lacking in, in, the, in each area and, and where, where those communities are going, like where, where the urban areas are going, where, where, what are we seeing in terms of growth? And, and I'm assuming a component of that is more consultation with the public because I, I can I can tell you that the night that we had the meeting in Hagerzell to talk about the up the update to the um, recreation master plan I had one person show up and we just went through election election and I, I can personally say I knocked at every door in my ward and my ward just, just so happens that it's a large geographical area so it, it gives me a good cross-section of what people are thinking and after knocking on those doors, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell the public what I think they need. I want to know from them what they think, the, what's lacking in their various communities throughout the county. Because as the CEO said, we, we are one county. And if we do make the decision to go ahead with a, a sports complex like this after consulting broadly with the community, because it's the community as a whole that's going to pay for this, um, We've got to consult, and we've got to consult thoroughly to get the public's opinion, and the questions have to be fair, and they have to, they have to paint a clear picture of what something like this will cost. We're not talking about a $2 million expenditure here or a $1 million 
community hall. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. And so I just want to be careful. Mm -hmm. And I want to do my best to try and respond to what I heard uh, during the election. And, you know, the mayor made mention of high-speed internet. I heard more about that. And social housing, or not social housing, but affordable housing, than I did about anything else. I mean, you're always going to hear about roads and those issues. Those will never go away, but people are looking for affordable places to buy because they can't afford what's out there today. I heard a lot about that, and I heard a lot about Internet better internet service. So I want to do my, I don't want to, I want to tell them what they, what they need. I want to consult and hear more from them because I don't think, I don't think we've done that yet right. on this issue. So through you, your worship, I'm hearing a bunch of things, but I think what I'm hearing and I need just some clarity from council is that rather than having sort of the specific analysis of this topic that what you want is you want an implementation strategy for the, the rec master plan, which is really what's required for each community over the next to deal with growth. Is that what I'm hearing is, is fundamentally yeah, I, a, a broader analysis? I, so I, I think that it, again, this study is going to, we know a lot where this is going to land. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, without jumping ahead, the reality is, is that, you know, Caledonia is the largest growing center in Haldeman County. So ideally, if you're going to do a recreation center that is scope with an indoor pool of some sort, Caledonia is probably going to come up as the number one place to locate it. Dunville is also a community that is their second largest urban center in population. And given its, its location, it's going to come out as probably the second choice. Uh, and so then the question is, do you do one, do you do two? Those are things that I think if we, if we simply have a study that says, here's what you're lacking in the county, right. uh, and, and here's a, a very vague number associated with those items, then we can put into a strategy and plan to say, okay, you know, Hagersville, for instance, could be lacking a community center. And so as council, we can, and, 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 and the recommendation from this report may say Dunville gets a, should have an indoor pool. So I think for us, it's being able to say, okay, well, to the community, we can support the idea of expending into an indoor pool in 2022 for Dunville. Uh, and we're going to respond to the lack of issues concern or concerns in Hagersville with respect to a community center. And we're going to put that in capital in 23 or 24, what have you. So we can slot all these things in there and be able to respond to the public. Here's what the report said. Right. And, and rather than just look at one item, we're looking at trying to meet some of the needs across the county so that people can at least then say, well, I can support that. You know, I can support a pool in Dunville because we're putting a splash pad in, uh, in, in Jarvis or we're putting an outdoor pool in Jarvis. You know what? That's what I'm looking for because if we just have one item, we're going to have six different responses and we're never going to get the county to be able to stand behind the decision without seeing the long-term view. Right. And so that's kind of what I think this really should do. Um, and, and it'll help each one of these counselors when they are banging on the doors because, you know, I think you, you can ask that question all across the county and get a different answer. Right. Uh, I had Dan and then Bernie. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, much has been said. Uh, I, building on what Councillor Churton said, like with regard to wherever we move forward, the cost, I think that we have to move forward and, and present. When you make any decision, the cost has to be put forward to the public, plain and simple. Because they might be looking at it going, yeah, that's a great idea, aquatic center. But here's the cost. Guess what? Your tax are going up $200 a household. This, this is going to happen. And keeping in mind who's making decisions at Queen's Park right now, the downloading, we're looking at possibly cutting other parts of our budget, and then we're going to all of a sudden throw this in. The, the public has to be totally aware of the total cost of what it means to them. And also building on what Councillor Delmonte said, when I knocked on doors in the election, I was surprised, to be honest with you, an aquatic center was down the totem pole for us in Caledonia when I heard from people. Um, Bridge? 
<laughs> had to throw you know I had to throw that in. Yeah. Come on. No, but with regard to infrastructure, social housing, like those other issues were definitely there. So, you know, we have to be so thorough on this and the cost to the taxpayer, we have to be a that has to be a priority. You know, keeping in mind what's coming down through Queen's Park in the next few years. Or not for us coming through Queen's Park. Barry and then John. Thank you. I respectfully disagree. <coughs> it was indoor pool, if that's what my constituents said to me when I knocked on doors, I realize your method is uh, a different way of approaching it, but we have to address the issue of indoor pool, and I think the information and the analysis and technical review will meet out that uh, information. So I have to say my focus is on indoor pool for my residents in my ward. They want to know whether it's feasible or not. And by the way, I, when I went around, I had people offering money, certainly not in comparison with what it's going to cost, a great deal, but they were they were, were willing to put their money up for it, and I know my fellow councillor is as well from his vibrancy funding. So I would like it say you focus on the indoor pool. Your analysis and your technical review is going to flesh out that that other information. So I think we're we are kind of saying the same thing, Bernie. What I, uh, you know, this will flesh out that. You know, there's there's lacking of an indoor pool in Dunville. Here's the cost. But while we're doing that, what I I believe this report should come back is, this is what we're lacking in Hagersville, so that so that we can see what that number looks like and determine whether it's something that we can put into the 10-year capital, because. If all we're doing is looking at whether an indoor pool in Dunville and Caledonia is feasible, we're going to be defeated before we get started. I, 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 conf I, I truly believe that, just looking around this table, but also looking around the public, I don't think you're going to get the support from the greater population for that project, which means those people that you're saying that are willing to throw money better be willing to cut some big checks because it's not going to happen at the county level. So I think for us to get there, and I think we can, but we need to be able to assess the values and strengths within Jarvis and within Hagersville, Cuga, to be able to offset that very end game that you're looking to get to. Thank you. I understand. You're, you want to be general. I want to be focused. And the focus is not specifically Dunville that I think in what this analysis is going to come out is that whether the county needs or can afford, and if it can afford one or two, that's what I'm looking at. We're talking about indoor pools, so we're not talking about everything else. You've got that ongoing study now as to what the community needs. I was to uh, Cougar the other night, and we discussed some of those needs, which was in the park, and it was good information, but I have to focus on the pool. That's what said. I have to say to my residents, it's either feasible or not feasible. You can have it wherever, but this is what's going to cost from the analysis from outside, not the fact that in general go around and see what we all need. We want to address the pool, indoor pool issue. Is Yours something? is indirect, mine is focused. So before I get to you, John, is this, if, if we chose to go down the path uh, of these specific items that Although they do benefit the county, they are certainly more beneficial in the, you know, the, the, the radius that they're located. Is this an item that we could area rate? Want to find out how support looks like? Yeah. Area I, rate. Area rate. <laughs> don't area think so. rate. Yeah. Uh, in, that is a particular use of area rating where you've got a service that can only be utilized by spe specific individuals. I mean, my only caution would be is that, you know, traditionally municipalities have moved away from area rating because you, you create the haves and have nots and uh, social inequity and yeah. can they or can't they use it. I mean, there's a lot of other 
issues that come with area rating other than the financial side of it. I just threw it out there for like, throwing it out there. <laughs> Go ahead, John? Yeah. I, I, I'm betwixt in between because I, I can see the mayor's uh, point of view where, like Danny says, when they built the HCCC, it, it polarized the, the county. It was us and them. Uh, can also see the advantage of the plan where we look at what's lacking in, in the in the county and we treat it as a county, not town of Dunville, the town of Haldeman anymore. We're one cohesive okay. area. I do hope that during the process that the consultant looks at traffic patterns as well because I know in my ward that goes down to South Cayuga, Sweets Corners, I know a lot of those people, they doctor in Dunville, they, they shop in Dunville, uh, a lot of that area on the Baines Road and, and down in that area. So it's not only just where the residents are, the base residents, it's, it's who moves into that community for what other services. You know, the hospital's located there, a lot of people doctor and, you know, when they say going to the hospital in Dunville, it's, it's, the lake is growing as well. I like the fact that we're going to do a comprehensive study so that it shows what's lacking where and people can see that we took it into a broader context that it's just not, and I, I know Bernie's focused on, on the one spot and where it would make total sense. You know, I'm sitting here in Cuga and that's the center of Haldeman County. For a traveling point of view, and I'm not saying I want the pool here, you know, because the base population doesn't support it. Any McDonald's or any Tim or you can build a Tim Hortons in the Sahara Desert, they'll find it. But any restaurant will do a study of, of the traffic patterns and what's going by, not the base population that can support it through the, the, the non, you know, traveling times. So uh, I guess what I'm saying here is that I like the approach that, you know, we're gonna treat the county as a whole, find out the deficiencies, come back with a comprehensive analysis, but at the end of the day, we still make the decision of <laughs> where it's going to go. Okay, Craig, and then Stu. Yeah. So, I think it would be helpful, Your Worship, if um, in considering this that uh, you and I sit down and write some terms of reference to bring back to council? I, I think so, but I think we also need to, um, I think you've clearly got a difference of opinion on council. Um, but I think as staff, we need to have a clear sense of so, what does council as a whole feel? So I'm thinking if, like I say, if we get together, yeah. sit down, we, we come up with a term of reference with respect to what this review would yeah. look like. And if that can capture maybe both positions the holistic one as well as yep. the pool uh that that bernie speaks of <laughs> then we can ultimately come back with a report uh support from council and then off you go with with the consultant because i i do I, I i see there are but i think ultimately if we write it right we could achieve both, we right. could we, we could achieve both it you know agendas right I mean, what I'm hearing clearly from council is you want to have a clear sense of what are the major community recreation facilities that you want to consider. Absolutely, everyone's saying that. So, yeah, I think for the sake of today, that's probably the best is to come back and sort of regroup on this particular issue so that in terms of um, moving the agenda forward today, what I'd suggest is we just simply don't make a decision on this particular topic and come back in the fall and then council can focus in on that. Um, but then we can move forward. The timing I think is, is, is going to be consistent with whichever perspective we go. But I think taking a, a step back to define what, how, what might be helpful. And I know, but and I think using the master plan we've just done, yeah, absolutely, this, this becomes really a recreation amenity study, 
yeah. and which the master plan actually speaks to right. future facilities, gaps, where things are. So we got a good baseline of information right. that we can use to inform the terms of reference in this next one moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's work where we can build upon, and I think that that work, really it's about sort of taking those ideas and working with, with, with council to uh, prioritize. Yeah, be because out of this is what you could end up with, or what you will end up with, is you're going to end up with $100 million <laughs> worth of <coughs> And at some point, council's going to have to decide, do they want... Out of the $100 million of projects, what's the most important? Do they want a lot of little things to meet community needs and, and use summer pools and go elsewhere or give up on? So those decisions will come back, and then you'll be looking at it in the broadest of, of scopes, right? Right. And I might add, too, I mean, we just, you know, 18 mil is what's in the new projected DCs? Or for, no, seven. no, seven. Seven mil. Oh, it was, it was 12, right? 14. 14. It was 14, but we reduced it. Yeah. But I would caution that by the time we got to a pool decision, those DCs will no longer be eligible. We're not sure what the transition will be. So, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty with funding right. for soft services moving but forward then, from growth. Right? But isn't it, my understanding is that it comes out of DCs, but then as council or county, we can add a supplementary line for our soft services. And it'll, there's a community benefit charge under the Planning Act that we're able to c collect based on land values. Again, back to the revenue neutrality we talked about earlier, we ha we're very you know susceptible that we don't believe that it's going to be revenue neutral. And th the province also has the ability to uh, make certain projects ineligible. We don't even know what that is. There's no regs around this right now. The reg there's some regs out right now for a comment period for the next 61 days. There'll be another comment period. After that, before the end of the year, we do know there's a hard deadline. There's a date of Jan 1, 2021, where you no longer collect DCs for growth-related soft services, and this new community benefit charge regime will be in place. Having said that, we don't know what's eligible for. There's going to be caps on it. We don't know how much we can collect. So the big concern is, is that there's going to be more, a good possibility there's going to be more money that has to come from the tax levy for growth-related infrastructure. Best case scenario. It's seven million right now. If it was neutral, it'd be yeah. seven million, and or it's going to be less. Best case. Best yeah. case. <laughs> yeah. Best case. Right. Well, let's go best case first. Right. Well, at this point, you don't, <laughs> I'm, you I'm don't so sick of going case. worst case all the time. Like, holy <laughs> heck! You don't know the worst case. So the best case is seven. <clears throat> and it's in, in <clears throat> but I mean, I, and let's face it. It's those. <clears throat> it's those new homes being built that's driving much of all of this demand, and and so. You know, hence why, you know, I truly believe there should be a community's benefit, you know, attached to those buildings because if those people are moving out of the city and they want to come out to the Haldeman and they say, hey, we want indoor pool or we want public transportation or, you know, we want, then, you know, <coughs> I'll argue all day long with any builder that, you, you know, you guys need to build that in as part of your, your, your plan and, and we're, you know, we are still very, very low in terms of our DCs across the county or across the, the you know, the area, the GTA. Um, Stu, uh, and then I think we're, it sounds like I think we're there. We'll bring back some, some thoughts and ideas in the fall. So you get the last word. Yeah, I'll keep it brief because, I mean, you've basically said, I had my hand up 10 minutes ago, everybody said what I wanted to say, but I mean, I disagree a little bit with uh, we have a difference of opinion. I think we all want better recreational services. We represent six different wards. We all have our unique wants or needs or whatever, but we have to look at the bigger picture, what's better for the county. Um, I'm just going by memory. When we first sat down our priority thing back in whatever it was, March, I think one of the first things we were asking the consultant was, before you decide how big where it should be, see if there's a need or a want. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think any of that's went away, whether we're looking at a pool or whether we're looking at an outdoor pool in Timbuktu. I mean, it's all the same picture. We just have to keep in mind it's the same person paying for everything. Well said. Well, so, thank you. So, so just <laughs> because I, I, I just, and I wanted you to have last word, but <laughs> I'm just going to say that, that this is all really going to fall under a want. I mean, these are our needs. These are wants. I mean, these are, these are luxury items, uh, regardless of where they're located. And, and, and 
you know, as, as we're moving along, I guess just thinking this through in that process, it's just, I think if you ask somebody in uh, low banks whether there's a, a rationale for an indoor pool, and you can't give them anything else that they can see of benefit, what do you, I, I, I think the answer is pretty self-explanatory. Or if you ask somebody out at Peacock Point, you know, the idea of a indoor pool, they're gonna say the same thing. I got the biggest pool out here for free. And uh, I, I, I don't, we don't need it, right? And, and so I, I think that we have to say holistically, Here's what we're looking at, and, and, and like Don says, if it's $100 million in recreational programs, then, yeah, we're not going to eat that elephant in one bite, but we possibly can look at prioritizing all of those different deficiencies and say, you know, well, we can make that happen this time, we can make that happen this time, so on, so on, so on, and just as we would do with every other uh, project that we have in our budget, our capital. So. Like so we'll, we'll, we'll work away at that. We'll bring it, we'll bring it back to, uh, to you guys in the fall. And uh, hopefully we have the terms that capture what everybody's been saying here. I know it will, because Craig's pretty good at writing that. So. <laughs> I think I've got a reasonably good sense of things. Um, so the next issue that, that was raised um, during the, the council priority session was the whole concept of um, affordable and social housing. And so really in terms of bringing this uh, issue forward there's sort of three key components and the one that um, is 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 of the uh, immediate priority is in fact to um, finalize the shareholders agreement with the um, Halderman Norfolk uh, Housing Corporation uh, which then provides sort of the rules of engagement um, between uh, that entity Norfolk Council and this council and it's something that's been outstanding. Once that's done, then the whole decision on the regeneration component that they're proposing can be considered. Um, and then based on what that is, whether there's budget implications uh, that come out of that. The second component is one, really, it's a legislative thing. All of these things, by the way, um, have a, a leads uh, through the... Um, uh, social house and social services component. The second is uh, a homelessness is, uh, initiative, and this is um, it, it, it's a statutory thing that the health or social services needs to do. So this is really about updating an existing plan. Uh, but the third component is really one where I think um, you know there's the, the the discussion at council is whether or not council wants to. Uh, be provided with information in terms of whether it wants to uh, try to support entities in producing what's called affordable housing, which is housing that's available to people um, at, 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 at less than market value uh, rates. Um, and certainly over the course of the last several months, I, I know there's a variety of uh, uh, opinions on that. However, the intent, I guess, based on it being identified as a, a item of priority at the priority session was to uh, provide council with an overview of the options and let council then make a decision in terms of whether it's something you want to move forward with or not. And so that's really the essence of this. If I may, I have a question. I know there's legislative <coughs> changes that are, are changing the affordable housing units, introducing smaller units, home share and all this. I don't know whether it's been proclaimed or not or whether it's just permissive legislation or where it's going. <coughs> but I, I'm somewhat concerned in uh, having a wholesome discussion with regards to the benefits of regeneration an information session to discuss the opportunities and benefits and to be able to leverage the assets we have to make something more. And I think we got into the discussion before. It's not sustainable to provide individual <coughs> units for housing or even duplexes. The information we got from uh, Holloman Norfolk, the new, uh, new CEO or whatever he's called, is that 
that's not the way they're going. You've got the land, you have more opportunity by leveraging and selling and getting more units out there. And I would like to have that discussion so council on both sides know exactly what we got and how we can best benefit. And that regeneration discussion I'd like to have. Okay, so to be clear, so the intent is, you know, this year, over the course of the summer and early in the fall that we finalize the shareholders agreement. Once that's done, then the intent would be to have the discussion around the regeneration. It'd be a wholesome discussion. Oh, yeah. It's intended to, to look at what is the plan? Does the plan make sense? So what's, it, what's, what's costing? So you can see very clearly the intent is to have a wholesome discussion on the regeneration plan. Thank you. Craig, so if, if I read this right, then really there's not really much we can do moving forward until the agreement is finalized again and ratified between the two parties? Um, we, we believe, and I think uh, our colleagues at Norfolk believe, that it's, it's one of those key things we've got to get dealt with. We've got to get the, the administrative rules in place before we go too far down the road because, um, you know, there's 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 significant value in those assets, and we really need to, I think, have a clear sense of uh, the the rules around who's making the decisions on those assets before we make any decisions in terms of going forward. Anything else on this topic? The only thing I'm going to say is that you know I, I was hoping that we'd see or Norfolk would be in a position to present us with that um, report sooner than later because the, the waiting list is significant. I mean, B Bernie and Stu and I see, see the statistics from Heidi's department. It's in the hundreds, and a lot of them are seniors. Yeah. So the sooner they get this regeneration report in front of us, the better, and if there's an opportunity, like Bernie says, to, you know, to create more and shared housing however they decide to go all i know is that i keep seeing a report from heidi every quarter and the, and the numbers are they're not going down they're climbing and so keep pushing them to get this information to us absolutely um i think you know i think there's a lot of opportunity but i think that we need to deal with the first item before we start okay definitely um, so we'll, procurement contract management, um, this is, um, this is on the list because of two things. One is there's some legislative things, but in addition to that, it ties in very clearly to our, uh, technology upgrades, the, the business application system. And it also, I think, will assist in some, uh, administrative efficiencies that, uh, we currently don't have. And, it, and as a result, should uh, allow us to free up or, or use our time more effectively. Uh, part of it's also uh, trying to deal with council's request or, or issue that I guess has been raised is the whole issue of contract management. The, the issue of you know, making sure that if someone's building the road that they're completing it on the day they say they are and what are the vehicles and opportunities to try to make sure that happens, which has been something that council's raised. So within that particular um, components up there, that's something that we see working on, um, you know, over the course of the term. Uh, it's, it's something that, um, you know, the first item is, is directly related to the, uh, or first and second items are directly related to the technology work that's going on. So that's why that's on the list. And customer service, again, uh, one of the technology things is to try to um, implement uh, what we call a virtual city hall, but which is really about allowing people to get information, uh, interact, do business uh, uh, remotely on their own time, that kind of thing. And so, we, again, we see there's efficiencies in terms of doing that. We also see that there's benefits in terms of being able to uh, meet some of the needs of our residents. So some of the key things that 
uh, we're looking at our online burn, burn permits so that you can do this on Sunday afternoon and, and get your permit without having to go to a municipal office. Uh, building permits uh, and, and ultimately ability to pay your taxes online, which we think are, you know, uh, going to improve our efficiencies, but also I think be very attractive to our, our, our um, uh, I was going to say consumers, but our residents. Barry? If I may, looking at the community hubs, is there going to be a smooth transition before we open the new building? Are people going to be up to speed so that when it closes down, we're right there to provide that assistance to the residents? Um, yes. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the intent is to have those up and running before the new building's in place. Thank you. And then, oh, sorry, was there anything else? I don't see any. Okay. So then the last one that was raised by council was the whole concept of public mobility. And at the last um, workshop, you know, there was a desire to look at a variety of models uh, that uh, might address this issue. Um, so there's a couple things I want to point out is this one is, if, if it's done, is, is definitely a latent term thing, just given all the other resources that, and you saw, you know, the timing and you've, 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 you've indicated that, you know, other key items like broadband, you, you want us to put the resources. Um, Within the organization, there's clearly not um, this speciality. Like, this is not something we've got expertise in. And at this point, we haven't necessarily identified you know, who would have carriage of it. So that's why you see it at the later part of the term. And uh, fundamentally, it's something we think we're going to have to secure some outside resources to, to help us with because it's, uh, it's not a business we're in now and it's, it's one that uh, really has um, some specialized technical knowledge required. Yeah, just to follow up with that, I appreciate everything that you said, Craig, but it, it was one of our priorities, yep. so just as long as it doesn't fall off the radar, you know, that's all. Yeah, and the, the purpose of having this is to recognize you identified it, and, uh, you know, clearly it's been identified as work happening. It's just not going to start yep. until later. I, I understand your, your explanation for the timing, and I, I don't have a problem with it. The only question I would ask, Craig, is is anybody from staff um, had a chance to follow up with Innisfil just to find out what's going on there with their system is it working is it yeah. you know are they finding that they're having to put more money into it yeah we're monitoring that uh on a regular basis okay. and yes staff have talked to innisville and generally speaking i think they they are putting more you know they, they've invested more money than they initially invested as Great. well so you know if we if and when we get into this we'll need to i think revisit their experience so we can learn from it yeah I, okay. I could add more to it i mean the innisfil one so they've 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 increased their budget significantly they've actually reduced the amount of use anybody can use of the service so people who are going to work five days a week four weeks 20 trips plus you know there and back are limited to 30 trips in a month and so they're short 10 for going to work <laughs> which has caused a lot of, it's been far more popular than what they ever imagined it would be. And the cost to the municipality is far greater than they ever imagined it to be. And so um, it's one that they're struggling with uh, right now. Um, and they're getting a lot of negative feedback from the community because their way of dealing with it was to restrict how much any one person could use it. But the populations that were using it because it was all subsidized rides are now being restricted in what they can do. And so it's, it's had a lot of feedback. But as, as, as the general manager said, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to get that and we'll include that in it. But it's, 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 it's had a lot of challenges with it. Um, and, uh, and, and the feedback's now, the pressure's on their council to add more and more money to it. Yeah, uh, I went to, <laughs> always jumping in here. Um, at that workshop there at Roma, um, their CA all but came out and said, 
it's their white whale. They wish they stayed away from it because it is costing them and it's going up and up. It's the Uber thing with them was taken off. If, if they didn't get the gas tax back, they would have been real and bad. It's one of those things that I'm glad that it's actually put where it is be, uh, with regard to the ex public transportation investigation uh, because there is a lot there to be considered and digest because we could end up with something that could literally put egg on our face as it's happening with Innisville. I, um, I had a meeting last week with uh, Donna Skelly and uh, and they're looking at a pet project uh, with Uber uh, and it's more of a Uber share program instead of just an individual um, call Uber up, get the car uh, for yourself. It's more of a, a sharing uh, ride program and so she's going to give me some more information on that. Um, she is uh, pushing the province to uh, to look at, um, you know, in, in lieu of the money that's being spent in, in public transit within the cities, you know, how can that be maybe offset with some, some dollars available for, for the very issues that we're talking about. So she's going to keep me updated on that. And then uh, I, uh, I spoke to both Don and Craig about a couple of ideas that I think we might be able to explore. And, uh, and so what I'd like to do is... is uh, continue on that path and possibly bring to you council in the fall or certainly by capital uh, a couple of thoughts that we might be able to do to sort of provide not a hundred percent of the um, answer that's required to support the whole county but possibly provide some some uh, solution that might benefit the uh, the communities and uh, and it's at a very low cost uh, uh, outlay for us uh, to, to be able to get there so so we'll 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 have that uh, mm -hmm. uh, report back back to you in the fall again or or closer to budget time. Okay. So the next three areas I'm just going to be really quick. Um, so <clears throat> the things that I'm going to outline for you now are things that your senior management uh, has identified as things that we think. Um, will help move the organization forward. But clearly the, the work on this has to fit within the priorities that you established. So you'll see most of it's near the end of the term and it's stuff that, um, you know, we, uh, we will work as, 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 as time and resources permits. And so there's really sort of three kind of key areas. And, and one is we're doing, and in some cases we're doing the work already. It's just trying to uh, embed it more within the organization and also to respond to some of the things that you guys said said during your workshop which was you know how do we know what we're hearing is actually reflective of the community and that's really the first is so what are the steps we can take to try to get a better gauge on when we get input well first of all how do we get good input secondly when we get it how do we know that it's it's reflective of the community and things like that and so there's some things that we've identified that we would work on, um, but we wanted to, you, you just to be aware that th those are things that um, are on the mind of, of your, uh, your management team. The second is really about how do we make our information available to the public and how do we do it in a way that it's, it's easy and it doesn't require cumbersome processes, those sorts of things. And so it's really towards, um, moving away from sort of the, you know, I want information so I have to go through a freedom of information request to providing, you know, basic information that uh, in, a, in a more fulsome way. And then the last one really is over the course of the last few years, um, council's been very supportive of trying to achieve efficiencies by um, delegating uh, decisions on uh, certain items. So for example, in the planning area, uh, you know, a lot of the technical matters have been delegated uh, in other areas, um, uh, for example, small grants, those types of things as well. And so uh, we think there's some further opportunities to achieve efficiencies. And so the focus really is, is going to be first on the, um, I think, on the HR and labor relations matters, and then secondly, on real estate matters. And the intent would be to try to avoid having to produce reports and you know, the time that takes, 
uh, yet at the same time ensure the accountabilities that council expects. So with that, um, I'm going to suggest the recommendations um, uh, be modified slightly, that you receive the report, uh, and that that number two be amended to um, that you approve it um, uh, subject to the um, uh, deferral of the uh, the pool complex uh, with a subsequent report to come back with the revised terms of reference in the fall, if that's okay. You, you want to add the report on the public transit stuff as well? I think I, what I saw from council was council was okay. I, I think that there's nothing precluding us from, you know, looking Anything at opportunities that... Might that, just bring it forward. It'd be a positive anyways. If right. Okay. And then the last is, is just clearly the intent would be to update you on an annual basis where all these things stand. Doesn't mean we're not going to do it on the interim, but formally. Um, I have no problem with that terms of reference being changed and tweaked a bit, but uh, I'm hoping early fall, like I don't want this coming in December, uh, late November. So I'm hoping early fall, but uh, that's my hope. I guess we're getting into my August. Um, <laughs> yeah, I believe John and I signed the resolution and we agreed to the amendment. I'll let John speak for himself. Huh? Uh, sorry, that was a different one, actually. That was something pending uh, a subsequent item on the agenda. So um, I, I'm just going to suggest, based on uh, the wording that Craig just indicated, that Clause 2 be amended um, after, uh, well, to read, that the 2018-2022 Term of Council Corporate Priorities be approved as outlined in Report CAO 01-2019 with the indoor pool, sorry, to be implemented between 2019 and 2022 with the indoor pool priority being deferred pending a subsequent report and that staff be directed to report back on the scope and context of a council priority related to an indoor pool and county recreational service needs in general. Is that okay? Is there any additional wording to that? So uh, it a, works for me if it works for council. So we're just pulling out that pool priority for the moment, deferring it, and there's a staff direction to report back on that. Should we put a timeline on that? Didn't it say fall? Oh, didn't say anything. <laughs> I missed that. Report back in the fall. Yep, report back in the fall. <laughs> God, Robbie, you shut this Sorry. <laughs> well, it's either me or Bernie's going to bring it up. <laughs> Take that so that uh, amended recommendation should be moved and seconded. Okay. Do I have a mover and a seconder as it's amended? Councillor Patterson, Councillor Medcalf. And uh, all in favor with that? That is carried unanimously. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, I know it's just been passed, but I think one of the things we'll do too is, is when we look at it today and go through it, is just the leads on some of these projects. That might get yep. a, a, The a, names may change. Uh, change just looking at the allotment of work, we'll at a senior management level have a discussion. So you yeah. might see that change, but the, 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 the principles of it are, are there. And what I took from the session is the, the internet fiber is clear around the table that that's, that's there and, 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 and is a priority like by all. And so yeah, trying to ensure that that gets pushed as, as well as we can being open and transparent and, and due diligence, but uh, knowing that that's a clearly a uni unanimous um, uh, priority of council. Yeah, if we could make that announcement, certainly by the end of the year, I mean, but uh, I think being able to to get get those wheels turning, uh, that's, that is the number one issue. And, and it's, it's and, and for staff or council for everybody in the county, I mean, that's a home run, you know, to, to, to knock that one uh, out that, that there is absolutely nobody that's going to, I think, in fact, your comment, Rob, about, about antenna. If I'm in the rural part of the county, oh, you'll and be they glad. say, hey, you guys want the intent, put it in my backyard. That's going to be better reception, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody's going to want that one. Um, so I, I, I think we get there. That's, a, you know, the pool, I, 
and, and the rest of the items that go with it, I, I, I think we, we do owe it to the public, uh, you know, to be able to get the data and the information. And, uh, and, then, and then that gives us all a good year, year and a half to, to be able to meet with the public and, and, and get that uh, buy-in. And if there's buy-in, then, then we've got the ability to implement. Councilor Patterson, I mean, are, is the buy-in like? Yeah. What are the people? What are? Is, is it a? Is it? Is it a thousand people, or is it? Is it greater? Right. Yeah. So I have. Uh, um, before we. Uh, actually, do you want to deal with this one? Because I don't think we need to go into closed. So. Um, all members of council have a, a draft recommendation in their red folders related to the CAO vacancy item that was discussed at Monday. Mm -hmm. So uh, we require an open motion and there's been some additional clarity and context provided to that motion. So if there's no need to go into uh, closed, then, then this is the motion that Councillor Metcalf and Councillor uh, Corbett signed. Yep. So no need to go into closed. No, oh, I'm good with it. Looks good to me. Okay, so it's moved by Councillor Medcalf, seconded by Councillor Corbett, yeah. that Craig Manley be appointed as an interim chief administrative officer for Holman County as of August 1st, 2019, and that subject to an appointment agreement being finalized through the county solicitor, Craig Manley be appointed as chief administrative officer as of September 3rd. <coughs> 2019 and that the mayor and the clerk be authorized to execute the employment agreement and that as required Craig Manley be authorized to appoint a general manager to act in his place during any absences all those in favor that's carried um, yeah so I, I brought up one item but there's there's also another item of pressing that, that we have to just quickly discuss and it's I'm, I'm sure we'll be okay within the realm of what we're doing because of the timing um, it's, and I, I'm not sure because I, I obviously with so many things going on, I, I don't remember seeing this come up in our agenda over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I know with AMO coming up, there's uh, the request for delegations has been uh, set out. The deadline for that actually is tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but is the 28th. It's actually, I just saw it today, it's been extended to next Friday. So, okay, so given that we're not going to be meeting. Um, there's two things that's coming out of this, I guess. One is, is that I think we as a council have to look at uh, if we're going to be attending these conferences, whether there's the value of attending them and, 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 and whether we want to, you know, or having these delegations. I mean, we've got five, six, I think six of us uh, going to, to AMO and uh, not one request for a delegation. So I'm not sure if that's in the spirit of what it is that we want to do uh, or or should we be putting a certain uh, emphasis on that if we're going to be attending these conferences that you know there has to be something other than just going to the conference uh, in terms of value for just not just the council but for the public. So I'm going to be putting in a request uh, to the MTO uh, because uh, I think the bridge in Caledonia, uh, not the bridge as it sits, not your bridge either, uh, but the bridge in Caledonia, no, not the new one. <laughs> as it sits, uh, you know, the rehabilitation is one thing, but the replacement of that bridge, the schedule, the communication, and on and on and on as it continues to go yeah. on. Uh, but also the relationship with Six Nations, because that that in itself is going to determine the success of that bridge and its replacement. I'm going to go uh, to Minister of Aboriginal Affairs for the same reason, the relationship with Six Nations, but also I want to talk about the water line that we've been uh, getting some traction and, and that uh, water line between Hagersville and uh, Caledonia. And then I'm going to ask for a meeting with the Minister of Infrastructure with respect to the same idea uh, with the water line to Hagersville to Caledonia, which all of that kind of ties in together with uh, the success of the Bridge of Caledonia. Uh, Minister of Housing, I uh, want to speak to them about our overall growth strategy uh, in terms of their support and, uh, and how our strategy fits with their methodology. And uh, lastly, uh, I have a uh, request uh, or I asked uh, the Mayor of Norfolk um, if she'd be willing to set up a joint uh, meeting where we would meet with infrastructure to talk about the benefits of bringing the water from Nanticoke into Norfolk County. And so she's uh, supportive of that. So we'll be asking of that. So 
those are going to be the ones I'm going to ask. But I'm going to also put this back on to you guys as council again, because I mean we we're all kind of you know uh, working in our, our, our particular areas. But at the same time, these are some of the things that, are, and especially within your area, we, we need. I, I need you to also be putting those requests in through Donna and making sure that that you know. You know how these things work. It's it's uh, you know there's it, it's it's a it's a bit of a circus, uh, but at the same time, um, I can only think of so many things at the time when I'm asking. If there's things that you guys want, uh, by all means, submit the request to Donna, so that she can get that request in. And uh, and 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 as I say, maybe we should, you know, in the future, maybe try to find a, come up with a bit better or cleaner processes to. You know, we're going to register. We're going to go, and here's the items that are of importance that we want to bring to the table. So, uh, Bernie and Stu, if I may, uh, we had difficulty in the past that you know before they used to have these meetings after the presentations, and when the, now they have them set up so that you miss the presentations, and that was the difficulty. But I can tell you, as a result of our discussion last year, I think we put our county on the radar with the minister with regard to the Frank Marshall Park and the Lake Erie Park. So I felt we made a headway. But it, it's always been the fact that you want to see something, you want to sit in on a, a presentation, and you got this minister's meeting that give you 15 minutes and then they shuffle you out the door. So I like Don's comment before. If you've got something that's pressing, contact them and get in touch with them. But I don't like to miss an opportunity, and, and they're still on the radar. Uh, Lake Erie Industrial Park is something that is of concern to us. Yep. Great, Stu and Dan. Yeah, just further to Councillor Corbett's point, I mean, that was six months ago. I think we had one delegation in Toronto, and we discussed the industrial land in Nanakoke as well as Dunville. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's on the radar or the ships have passed in the fog. I'm just wondering, would that be an, an insult if we requested a meeting again, or has senior staff had any contact from that minister? I'm just not sure if it fell on deaf ears or not, and maybe we need a second kick at the cat. Well, I, I, I think that it, uh, it does not never, never you know, behoove us to not ask, and, and, and then at that meeting, should you get it, it's... Uh, well, you're just wondering what the follow-up is or the takeaways. I mean, we've done that before where where I've sat with my hands down and said, they said, well, what are you here for? And I said, well, I'm here for you to report to me. I said, well, report what? And I said, well, what I asked you last year. <laughs> I didn't get the response I was looking for, but but I made the point. Um, but, yeah, no, certainly, again, it's it's, it's – it's, you know, it's 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 like you know, dripping water out of a tap. You just it has to just continue and continue and continue. And of course, they change. We just seen a change in in, in cabinet. So so with that, you know, you have to continue to go back and browbeat them. So I, if if there is a ministry that you'd like to to arrange, send it to Donna with with just uh you know two or three bullets as to what the content the the, the context of your meeting or what you'd like. And then she can put the request in through Evelyn, and we can get. Uh, I think Donna does. Or it does direct. it direct? Okay. Yes. And then we can at least, uh, you know, I mean, if there's six of us going, you don't need to go to a mall. But if you get to one or two, uh, you know, and we just kind of share off each, you know, them, then we can. Uh, For. At the, I think at the very least, what you get out of there is you get two or three contacts that allow us to bring back to staff and say, you need to call this guy because this is the guy that's going to make the decisions. Or at least <laughs> not make the decisions, but at least get the sticks moving. Okay? So what was the date? Sorry, Evelyn? Uh, July 5th is the deadline now. Okay. So July 5th, if there's anything that, because mm -hmm. uh, we won't see each other, obviously, uh, before then. Yeah, and in fairness to Donna, if yes. you can get it to her for July, July 2nd. Yeah, yeah, July 5th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. July 3rd. Yeah. Like July 2nd or 3rd, yeah. it gives her time to be able to prep it and get it off. Okay. And then uh, we've talked about this uh, at, at length, and there is some success, um, but there's, it's not entirely successful. But we're coming into the long weekend. We're coming into the best uh, part of the summer. We're not going to be here at the table. Uh, we made some, uh, you know, some, some some pretty rash changes with respect to, you know, the parking along the quarry, 
but what's happening now is uh, they're just parking up in mm -hmm. front of the signage and so I'm just wondering uh, or they're yeah they're dropping them off uh, and then they're parking mm -hmm. you know outside of the realm of where we've set the, 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 the no parking no stopping does it does it warrant us uh, and 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 what would require if we wanted to because obviously we're not going to be back together before August does it warrant us to be able to just slip you know another half dozen signs up further the road uh, just because all we've done is we've taken we've responded to one neighbor who was complaining and we've just pushed that problem onto the next neighbor and now that neighbor's in a confrontational situation with these people and so we're not really solving <coughs> the issue as it sits Barry? yeah we had a, a rather good discussion on this at the police services board and there's a couple of issues here what is the owner doing to fence in that property there's an onus on him and we got into the discussion about a tow truck showing up and uh, the police leaving and the indication is that they were pulled away through priorities and this is going to happen and yet you've engaged the tow truck operator so somebody's losing out there priorities versus sitting there and I know no nobody else can be involved unless we got uh, our enforcement staff that can be there all the time but it is a problem with priorities yeah I just like to add to that I'd like to thank the mayor for I was kind of secretly messaging him under the table because I wanted to bring this up before <laughs> we left for the summer and I kind of want to do it while Tyson and Craig is still here I mean, we, we corrected a problem, we thought, at the quarry parking. Inadvertently, we've created another problem. I didn't want to wait till we're back at the end of August or September. I'm hoping it doesn't require a further change of the bylaw. I can't remember if we, if we laid out a distance how far the no parking signs will go, but the house in question where the complaints are coming, and I have to thank Council Damani. He, he handled the calls last night because the people are mixed up which ward it was, which is fine. We're only talking a distance of about 20 feet where the last no parking sign is and this individual's house starts. So unfortunately the folks are parking on the shoulder, blocking his driveway or his sight lines, there's garbage, there's been verbal confrontations. I'd hate to see over the course of the summer that a resident gets arrested for um, assault or something if it escalates. So to me it's a very, very easy fix. If we could ask the roads fellows just to put one more, one more post in either side of the road further west of where the last pole is in concession 12 and hopefully that issue goes away and we're doing our due diligence and hopefully correcting a, a small issue that could escalate what is for the mayor I guess t t t right now what is the, the, the parking bylaw speaks to where that last sign is I take it uh, through the mayor yeah it was done by distance I mean if, if council wanted to do that we could prepare today a bylaw I would have to be prepared today we'd have to extend the distances and then we'd have to coordinate with roads operations to get the signs and posts up there if there's a willingness to do that I could like over lunch pull that together if that's where we want I don't yeah. I mean, maybe there's a procedural thing as well I'm not sure but <laughs> Evelyn's got yeah, her hand there up. is I mean it, a bylaw to be in effect has to be passed at a council meeting we could call a special council meeting but I think to do it today is not within the timeline so if there is thought to or availability desire to call one next week is, I, I don't know how how that works into councillors schedules we can certainly make those arrangements so just question I know this may sound a little offside but hypothetically if the roads guys took the last sign and moved it 200 feet further west what is worst case falling out here? I'm just asking. You're not going to like the answer. The worst case is we tow somebody. They win. And uh, then they challenge it, and then we get uh, okay. uh, damages and all that uh, claim because against of the it. And, or worse, what it does is it it will then. Uh, encourage more activity uh, that we don't want to see. I guess I had to ask. It's it's so, yeah. 
I, I think then if I can leave you with it, it, it's not going to go away. As I say, we've displaced the problem. Right. So, so we need to look at amending that bylaw. And, and I think this weekend's going to be a pretty telltale of, of what that's going to look like. Boy. Frankly, I don't think it's one sign. I don't think it's 20 feet. I, I, I think we need to just go straight down, uh, probably, uh, you know, for the sake of the road. Uh, because all they're going to do is just drop drop the, the their, their car load up, and someone's going to hike it down the road. I know. And so, at, at the very least, another half kilometer kilometer up the road, I think, is going to uh, it, it would be a start. But probably by the time we're done with this bylaw, it's going to cover the road to the boundary, uh, and and that'll be it. <coughs> no different than what we did in front of the track. You know, we just covered that no parking right across the track uh, on, on uh, Indian line there. So I think we should prepare it and and then the councillors in that particular area, probably I'm sure myself, will get the pictures uh, this weekend. And if we need to respond, then we can call a special meeting to respond uh, and and then execute that, that amendment. John? Just for the sake of the weekend and the long weekend, I know we only have Friday left, but is there not some type of thing we can make up a construction area that's going to take place on the weekend and you just set up there's no parking from here to the end of the road construction just to get around the bylaw because it's basically we're looking at doing some construction there and uh, I don't know if the roads guys can put up some type of temporary sign no parking either side for the next week because of uh, construction and the kids down there and charge 20 bucks a car you make a killing this week <laughs> well no i'm just saying something Valley something that <laughs> by, it, it circumvents it circumvents the bylaw but it <clears throat> it may be alleviate one of the best weekends for swimming there in the in the year but i yeah i i, I we're opening ourselves i think the best thing is let's amend the bylaw and let's be prepared if we need to reconvene uh, to make that adjust, let's follow the process, uh, uh, and uh, and we'll respond to the public. Like you can just simply say, yeah, this is the challenge for us. But yes, we're trying, and we've and, and we, as always, we're going to respond, and we'll respond to it if it becomes an issue this weekend. <coughs> if I mean, if if through you, Mr. Mayor, if we if we want, if you if you, if if it's of that urgency, then I would provide direction to schedule a special yeah, meeting at council the clerk can advise what what's the appropriate time frame that we can get the stuff together and call a special meeting at council with a with a well, special meeting committee with a council right afterwards it can go directly to a special meeting of council special meeting yeah, of council. do it all in one shot so yes. and then schedule that yes. next week so monday's a holiday right so what can't be that day so tuesday morning it's like we normally well, so when, I think I, uh, it did, uh, in terms of we'll uh, notice, out. we need 48 hours notice. So that's not the issue. I think it's maybe about staff putting the bylaw together and. Yeah. Uh, so so through, well, a, through the mayor to Tyson. Tyson, mm -hmm. if we're putting a bylaw together, if yeah, we were to extend it. Through the mayor, that's all of 10 minutes. I, I yeah, can it's get just amending. Yes, sure, but I just right. want to, so we'll go up to the 13th on heading up Sandusk and then all the way over to 55. I mean, it is just going to push them further away, but oh, yeah. Yeah. it'll just bump them to the next road. So the issue we're going to have, Mr. Mayor, is we're going to have to do, um, we're going to have to do locates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they, they, they won't be able to do it without getting locates done. And so, as far as the sign going up, that's exactly. two weeks. So we could do locates now. What we'll do is we'll leave here. We won't operate. We'll send an email to all of council, based on where we think the, the we're suggesting it, be, it goes, and 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 call for locates, and then call a special meeting of council to come back with a bylaw. I just wanted to mention that I called Randy Charles yesterday, and he was going to follow up with Woody to see whether or not there was anything that, that we could do to pressure, force, encourage the property owner to get his own security, <coughs> like Duff and Corey's used to do, the, the, the owners, because you know, I had a chance late last summer to talk to some of these kids that came out from Brantford and asked them, you know, what, why are you guys coming here? Well, Port Dover is too busy. We're not going there anymore. This is this has become a place, you know, yep. better. We can get to it quicker, and of course, they can do a lot more at, at this location in terms of drinking than they can in Port on the beach of Port Dover. But word's getting out there, 
No, the, this, so this is media. becoming the new party place. But what bothers me as well is the the treatment that our you know our student bylaw officers took last weekend. Yeah. Holy cow, they were treated pretty rough by Please. some of these people that were coming out to party. It's, really it's not a good scenario. There, it, it, it is now actually, uh, people are doing these as businesses and there's lots of examples now in yeah. the U.S. where they're converting them to paddle boarding mm -hmm. and swimming and, and et cetera. And yeah. so the individual may just take it up and, and con control it to some degree and do yeah. something, but I, that's up to them to, that's not gonna help us in the next no. six months. No. Oh, okay. okay. Would, yeah. it, would it be feasible or can we like look to hire an off-duty OPP to be there the whole time? Like by the time they write all the tickets and everything, we're, we're gonna make money off it. Or like a paid duty. Yeah, like a paid duty like we do for special events because you do that for a certain period of time. Especially on a long weekend. Long weekend, it, I think that if you did the balance sheet, it would come out in our favor that way and what it would do would now you've got the officer there that's just staying there you can't and they can't use the excuse well we had another priority event that we had to go to like we heard yesterday but if he's sitting there then people are driving by and there's no tickets being written so then it is a cost right i mean i get what you're saying yeah but, but well, would you would you like us to look i mean we're operationalizing this is not really yeah i'm sure it's on the agenda today but we could um look at you know this weekend do we we look at uh uh, whether I mean, it's a long weekend, whether or not we, we could uh, obtain a, a paid duty for, for this weekend and cover the hours from 8 to 7 at night um, through each of the days. I mean, that's the request that could be put out if that's what council yeah. suggests. And even noon to 8 because the, they aren't going to get there that early in the morning. Wait, well, that, be let's, 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 yeah, let them park and then nail them. Let's, let's, let's see what this weekend looks they like with the up. changes we've already established. We're going to do the amendment on the bylaw. This gives us, you know, this will give us at least a, a flavor of what August will look like. And, and if we need to, then we can look at alternatives and possibly even, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe possibly even given bylaw, you know, the opportunity of picking off Sunday for, for a special day if the students want it. The police, I think the OPP would be, cost us more money, but okay. from a paid duty Perfect. out there. Okay. OPP vehicle. Give us more thumb. Yeah. More Trump here. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so before I pass this motion by, um, I'm sure for those of you that uh, don't know or do know that uh, this is our last official meeting with Don as their CAO and uh, there's going to be uh, a whole lot of, uh, of goodbyes over the next three weeks and, and an official goodbye uh, ceremony I think coming so I don't want to spoil my, uh, my speech for, for that day but uh, um, I know that for, for certainly for myself it's been a pleasure to be here working with Don, he's taught me a lot, and uh, he's made my life as mayor certainly a lot easier. And uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to to working with my new CAO and the challenges that I'm going to throw at him. Um, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I can't say enough. But I do have a lot of other things I want to say, but I want to wait and save it for another time. So, but I do, uh, I want you to know that uh, you're going to be missed, and and uh, you, but you've certainly been a very much appreciative of what you've done for this county and the people in this county over the years, and and we can't thank you enough for for the work and service you've done here. Yeah, well, th thank you, and thank you to all the councillors that did uh, send me messages and that. And so, uh, it's been 12 great years, and uh, you're in good hands. We got a great succession team moving forward. So. Um, it's uh, it's onward and upward, and it's one of those ones that the uh, organization, the test of time, and and, uh, and the values uh, that we said at the beginning, you know, things would change, but values wouldn't, and how we did things would be as important as what we did, and so the support of council has been amazing, and so for that I thank you all. It's it's been very very good and a very unexpected leaving, uh, nothing that I had ever even dreamt of, thought of, whatever. It was uh, out of the blue phone call. Um, and uh, but an opportunity that for for both I guess career advancement and just challenge and and family is uh, was uh, sort of trumped. Uh, hadn't seen my granddaughter in like every two months for the last couple of years, so I'll be able to. She'll be like 15 minutes away uh, walking 
So uh, I'm looking forward to that. So thank you very much. Um, so it's moved by Councillor Shurton, seconded by Councillor Corbett, that this meeting now adjourn at 11.54 p.m. All in favor? That's carried. We'll get a second. <laughs>